striper time. And for the millions of anglers who live on the sea coasts, the husky striped bass is the rival and the peer of the wily trout and the wise old black bass of inland waters. Chief striper headquarters is Cuddyhunk, an island off Gay Head, Massachusetts. The quiet village is the El Dorado of striper anglers, like the Miramichi or the Skagadoff or salmon fishermen. And chief among the sportsmen striper hunters is Coot Hall. Coot's been at it many years, and everything he does, from the lures he's collected or designed, to the boat with the tillers both fore and aft, and the radio telephone on which he shares information with other hunters, is aimed at one thing, hooking the big silvery fighter cruising the tide rips. Coot's cast is a long high one. He's using a rigged eel or an unreasonable facsimile thereof. It's a thing with a lure, dear to the heart of a striper. But now, Coot's got a customer. for this one, about 25 pounds of some very delicious eating. But so long, Coot Hall, because now we're going to follow the fish as they migrate southward to warmer waters. Warmer waters? They don't look it, but a fish has its own way of telling. It's Montauk Point, right on the tip of New York's Long Island. That's the famous Montauk Lighthouse. Our angler here is sportsman Harry A. Watkins. He's using the height of the cliff to reconnoiter the fishing grounds. Watkins, like many striper fishermen, does it the hard way. He's a surf caster, one of the hard-bitten tribe who disdain boats. They line the lonely stretches from Cape Cod to Hatteras, from the Golden Gate to the Columbia River. They know the lore of the sands and shoals like a real shore bird. They're friendly, but we'll bet Watkins didn't get much information about lures and fish. That's top secret. But maybe he did find out how that fella got out there on that rock. We can't figure it out. The surf caster keeps his rod higher than the boat fisherman. He has less room behind him. Stripers like to congregate near rocks and over shoals, nosing about and snapping up the smaller fish that build up their fighting weight as high as 60 or 70 pounds. A big plug is the main course at Montauk. The most likely spot can be a bust. Our sportsman heads for his beach buggy. The oversized tires plow over beach and dune while he searches for signs of disturbance on the water's surface that mean the fish are feeding. It looks like the Sahara, but this lonely scene is along the shore of that thriving commuter's heaven known as Long Island. down along the beach, there's another shoal. It seems to be a likely spot, for in the shallow water just offshore, the tide and the waves stir up the shrimp, small crabs and fish that stripers eat. The problem here is to select a lure out of the many every angler lugs around. Watkins selects a medium-sized plug. No matter what non-anglers or even fish might think, to the fishermen, this resembles a small fish, and that's the important thing.
Casting is a two-handed job. Power is transmitted along the big, whippy stick. The final snap flings the lure in a couple of hundred feet of line far out. The lure must look alive. Far back on shore, the reel is turned to give the proper action. Nothing happens. Well, the surf caster is used to that. If patience will help, someday a surf caster may be a saint. Whoops! He's hooked something. It's a good one, all right. And even if he doesn't land it, this is still the surf caster's reward. The fight. He's got it. A nice 20-pound fish. This will lower Mama's raised eyebrow and brighten her skeptical eye when our surf caster stumbles home after a dawn till midnight campaign on the beach. When there's a single striper during the spring and fall migration period, there's apt to be a school. This could be a hot spot. This one's a backbreaker. A good 45-pounder. Just one of these can add up to a good season's fishing anywhere else. But in spring and fall, when the water's cold from Cuttyhunk to Montauk, from the Golden Gate to the Columbia River, that's when the surf is hot. That's when it's striper time. 